back to my stop staring at me <laughs> Hey guys, it's Exa and welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing another fun rhinestone um, DIY stressing project um, via traveling. I had so much fun rhinestoning while on the boat that I figured why not adventure for fall um, on a train, at some wineries, go apple picking, and uh, work on my shoes. So uh, we can go ahead and get started and I'll tell you all the supplies I use to make these. All right guys, so obviously the first thing we're going to need is our pair of shoes that we are going to be decorating. So I have a pair of tan Christian Louboutin Pagal pumps. Um, I buy a lot of the tan ones because they're pretty cheap secondhand with the generic color, and it's really great for customizing into, um, you know, whatever fancy design you wanna come up with. So the next thing we're going to need is all of our crystals to cover them. I did go with uh, one shade of orange, two different shades of yellow, and then a shade of red to create the desired ombre effect and I do have 5,000 of each of the larger size stones and then 1,500 um, ish of the smaller ones so I will let you know at the end if this ended up being um, enough hopefully it is but uh yeah we can go ahead and move on so the next thing we're going to need is our handy dandy e6000 which I use all the time for so many projects it's really great to have on hand and to apply them, I like to use tweezers, um, like the ones you see here that are nice and pointy, but you can use one of those like rhinestone picking up tools if you'd like as well. Also, I find it helpful to have a Q-tip to kind of spread your glue around. Um, and the last thing is I find it super handy to have some of these containers so that way you can put your stones in them. And finally, we will need our Angelus leather paints. So I have here a yellow, an orange, and a red. These don't need to exactly match your crystals, but it is helpful to have a base color that is relatively similar to the stones you're putting on so that way the original shoe color doesn't stick out. So with that, we will need a paintbrush, and then that is all of our supplies, and we can go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is kind of paint the background of our ombre effect. So I'm just going in here with my paints, uh, starting with the toes being yellow, the backs being red, and then the orange being in the middle. You don't need to be super specific with this. You don't need to have super solid color um, because we will be covering it with all of our stones, like I said earlier. So you can kind of just, you know, go at it, get as much color as you want. It doesn't have to be super uniform and nice and neat for this step. So I did start with my yellow first and my red on the other end, and then I went in with the orange in the middle so I could kind of blend out the colors a little bit um, as each layer of paint was drying. Again, doesn't need to be super specific. You don't have to have like a perfect ombre here. It's okay if there's a little bit of like a coloration line separating them because when we put the stones on, that will further like uh, make the colors blend together and you won't have this weird line. So yeah. It doesn't have to be super fancy. This took me maybe like 10 minutes total to paint both shoes. Nothing fancy here. And once they're done um, with the paint, it looks something like this. And you can go ahead and let them dry before we get started applying our crystals. So I like to start at the tip of the toe on my shoes. I find it's much more easy if you go from the beginning or from the other end um, and work your way down instead of trying to start in the middle, um, just for organization of getting all of your crystals to line up nicely. So starting with the very tip of my shoe, I applied my E6000, and then I'm just using my Q-tip to kind of spread it around um, and make like a nice little even coat there on the tip. So that way when we start putting our crystals on, each crystal will have the same amount of glue. You don't want it to be too thick here because then the glue can kind of ooze out around the crystals and it just makes a mess. Um, but again, you do want to make sure you have enough that they obviously stick and don't fall off um, as you're wearing them. So I'm just starting with the very bottom edge to make a nice straight line um, going around the perimeter of the shoe. And then I'll kind of fill that in um, as I go over the tip of the toe curve. So this part here is real time, uh, so you can see it does take quite a long time to do this project, um, but I will speed up the video segments going forward, so that way you guys don't have to sit here for, you know, 40 hours and <laughs> 20 hours or however long it takes to watch me do this whole progress. Um, but 
Like I said, you do want to be really meticulous and make sure that you're lining all of the stones up so there is an even amount of space between each of them and they don't have any like awkward big gaps. So as I'm going from the toe back towards the back of the shoe, again, I'm starting with the bottom edge on each side, so that way I can make that nice, straight, crisp line um, along where the sole meets the upper material of the shoe, and making my nice, even rows, going back little sections at a time. You don't want to do more than like a one-inch square area at a time because your glue will start to dry um, before you can get all of the crystals on, which obviously you don't want to happen. So make sure that you're just working in little sections at a time. So as you'll see in this section that I'm in right now, this is where I'm going to start introducing my next shade, the slightly darker yellow orangey color, um, the next section of my ombre. I'm just putting a few individual stones at first as I'm going down because we want to make the um, effect look like it's a true ombre. Now since we are using crystals, obviously we can't fully blend them. So with each row, we're going to add a few more and a few more until eventually there's so little of the original yellow color and so much of the next orange color that it completely becomes solid of the next orange face. So this is also a good reason why it's really important to start at the tip and work your way back kind of in an even row because you want this ombre to be symmetric going back towards um, the back of the shoe and even on each side. So you'll see as I keep going, again I'm doing more and more of the next orange color and less and less of the first yellow color. I'm sorry that my video on this doesn't really fully show like a dramatic change in the colors, um, so it's a little hard to tell what I'm doing, but I hope you get the point of that. And as I get towards this top edge where it goes around the ball of your foot, again I want to make sure that I'm starting off with lining that edge so I have a nice straight line and continuing to line the bottom edge where the sole meets it. Um, and then kind of ending up finishing off in the middle because if you do have a slight different um, spacing in there, it's a lot easier to hide that in the middle than if you're looking at the edges of them. You will definitely notice if there is um, you know, a missing stone or one's a little bit out of place. So it's always good to start on your edges and work your way towards the middle of each section as you're going. And as you can see, I was going on a fun fall scenic train tour while working on these. Definitely got a lot of weird looks from other passengers. Also, I want to say I did work on both shoes simultaneously. Um, I found it was a lot easier to make sure that, that I was at the same point with the same color on both shoes if I did them um, together instead of consecutively doing one whole shoe and then the other whole shoe, um, which is what I usually do for my uh, rhinestone crystal projects. So as you can see here, um, I am now working on the transition to the next darker orange. In this one, you can really kind of tell um, that the colors are different in the crystals here. Um, so this is probably a more useful point for you to notice how few I'm putting of the orange at first. I'm just doing one to every five or six of the yellow color on the shoe here, starting with just a few in that first row. Um, as I slowly transition to the next color. This is also why it's really helpful to kind of paint the base um, as well because you can kind of use that as a guide for where you want your transitions. Sometimes you get kind of like tunnel vision as you're applying the rhinestones and you don't even realize that you've gone further than you intended to with one color because you just get so in the zone. So having these color differences on your shoes can make it actually really helpful um, for guiding your eyes to what you're doing. Also, as you can see, my mom was spinning and we were sitting at a local cidery while working on our projects. Um, our tables always get the most peering eyes when my mom and I go places because we're always working on a project.
So here you can see we have fully transitioned into this darker orange color and it does make it look relatively seamless that the colors are changing, which is what I was going for with this whole ombre color effect. So skipping ahead a little bit, once I got my orange to the next transition point, um, I did kind of stop with that and then broke out my reds to start on the heel. So I'm starting at the very bottom of the heel and working my way up. And I am using a smaller rhinestone size. Um, for this one, I'm using the two millimeter instead of the usual four millimeter size that I use for the rest of my crystals. And that's because I like how petite the stilettos are on these shoes. And I don't wanna add any more bulk to them um, as I can avoid. So I like to use the smaller crystals. Also, when you're working in little areas, it's useful to use the small ones because they take up less space, so they kind of fit together um, and mesh a lot easier to not have weird gaps between them. And since we are traveling, our next stop was at a fun local winery. Um, it was really great, again, watching mom spin while I'm working on my shoes, getting a lot of really weird looks from everyone around, but all in all, it was a really fun weekend, and we got a really cool pair of shoes out of the project. So this final section here is where I even everything up and meet it at the back of the heel. So again, we're gonna finish going around this top edge, making our nice straight lines in our orange. And we want it to kind of blend into the red as it hits the back where the heel um, part meets, you know, the back of the shoe. So we make our nice even lines um, and then start kind of filling in towards that middle section. So as you can see here, um, I kind of have the orange going around and I'm making my nice straight lines of orange headed down and then as I meet with the red, then I'm intermixing a couple of those red stones there. So it kind of makes that seamless uh, transition that we've been doing this whole time. So because I am kind of finishing up, I'm starting from both sides. So I did start with the orange and then go towards the red, mixing a few in, and then I'm also working on the red, mixing a few oranges in on that direction. So that way our final section is going to be right here in the middle where they meet. So that way if the colors um, and the sizes of the stones don't quite perfectly meet and I have a few larger gaps between some, it will be kind of a distraction from your eye and you won't be able to tell. And that's it. These are the last few little stones put in here. And then you can't tell where I started the shoe and where I finished. Oh man, just look at the sparkle and the shimmer on these shoes. It was completely worth the about 16 hours that it took me to do them. Um, it was an amazing project. I am so impressed with how they came out, and they might be my favorite pair of Strauss Louboutins that I own. So guys, thanks for watching um, another one of these fun tutorials, and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you're not already, so that way you can catch all of my amazing Louboutin transformation tutorials and other projects that I'm working on. Here's a sneak peek of a couple that will be revealed soon, so make sure that you're subscribed. And if you are subscribed already, thank you so much for supporting me and all of my crafting adventures. If you try any of these out, please link them on Instagram. I would love to see um, what fun stuff you guys come up with.